Better to have a short life that is full of what you like doing than a long life spent in a miserable way. Welcome to Footwork. So I got drafted. I left, I left college early. I got drafted by the earthquakes, played there a bit, um, and then with the, also with the Seattle Sounders. Uh, but was, what was extremely formative for me was that uh, in between that, sandwich in between that time, I spent th uh, three years in England. I left. I got fed up with soccer in, uh, in the United States, and I wanted something more. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have uh, the, 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 all the soccer channels and stuff like that. You had soccer made of Germany one hour a week on Friday night, which was a massive hit. Uh, and then you had occasionally an English game on TV, but there, I wanted more. And I said, the, the only way I'm gonna get it is to get the hell out of here. So I had a one-way ticket and I went off to England and I played there for, for three years, I ended up getting coaching licenses and things like that. But, uh, you know, I started at a semi-pro level and ended up with Wrexham in the English league. And, uh, and uh, that was a, a massive experience for me because as, as we, we were talking about earlier, it's a different world. You get in there and the, the, a, the play is faster. It's a lot tougher. The demands are a lot higher, but it's not just, it's just, it's not just what happens on the field. It's off the field where you're around football all the time and you're talking about it and, and everybody's got an opinion about something, but the conversations can go all night long about a game that happened last weekend. And yeah. that's, yeah, you just eat that with a spoon because you love the game and you want more of it. So, so that was that was kind of a general background on me. Then I evolved into coaching, or from player coach on to coaching and professional management, and so on and so forth. So, you know, I probably touched just about every level in the U.S. Uh, both as from the standpoint of what happens on the field as a player, as a coach, and as a manager, as a um, as an executive, as a team owner. Um, and uh, even as an agent uh, representing doing contract advice for a few players. So, you know, the background has been fairly deep and wide, and it's kind of led me to where I am right now with the Talent Project. Now, what is the Talent Project? Well, the Talent Project is, is designed, it was designed uh, to uh, give young American players access to Europe at a time when FIFA law otherwise prevented it. And I've worked with a few players in the past, like Land Donovan and, and Bobby Wood, getting them into the European system. I created the Talent Project as a study abroad program. And um, through that, I could get young Americans into Europe. And then around that, I constructed a Bundesliga uh, player protocol development system, where basically we're a Bundesliga academy without the the attachment to a club but they're the players come in they're learning the language they're developing the the cultural agility that they need um they're understanding the tactical nuances which you guys understand is, is night and day from what they're exposed to they're exposed to a much faster game a much more physical game in a different kind of way mm -hmm. uh, and they're also developing um a kind of an inner steel that is also required for living and playing abroad we have several pros that have gone in and uh, they've gone gotten pro before their 18th birthday. Uh, some have, you know, what was, real, what was really designed as a one year run has really turned into a much longer proposal for these guys, but we've had much more success than we would have projected in the very beginning. And I think that that shows that uh, what we're trying to prove here as part of what we're trying to prove is that it, uh, there's no difference in talent between Americans and Germans or Americans and Brazilians. Or, there's no difference whatsoever. It's the environment. And so we, if we can all agree that we come from a less developed environment, but we have the same level of talent and we can bring these players into the, the, into that and give them the same advantages, bring them into that same sort of environment. When these kids are hungry, they start to narrow that gap pretty quick. Three or four months later, all of a sudden, you see a completely different player. Hmm. And that's the transformation that we're trying to prove that is possible for American players. Give them the necessary, feed them the right uh, information, feed them the right environment, and watch what happens with American kids. It's really exciting. And how do you create the uh, Bundesliga Academy environment without having players that grew up in this country? Well, that starts with your technical staff. Uh, you know, you, you have to have people that understand what that means. And so we have 
you know, we have uh, 15 coaches full time here on campus, uh, three of which are dedicated to us and have all been attached to Bundesliga clubs. And so they, they have that understanding, that environment. And then the, you know, the head coach basically sp spells out that, you know, this is a training plan. This is the objective of the training plan. This is what we're trying to get for the, for the players to absorb. And so we have a plan that, that runs from the first day all the way to the last day over 11 months. And, um, and we push for very high standards. And um, the, the intensity, the, the, the program, the training is intense. The physicality is intense on the field. It's not for everybody. Uh, but they, we run this the same way that, that we would want to see our guys at Bayer Leverkusen or at, if they were got a trial at, at, at Red Bull or Salzburg or at uh, Bayern Munich or Schalke or Gladbach or whatever it is. We try to replicate that environment and, and that intensity has to be there every single training session. So what is it in your background that you've been able to pull from you know, these teams and working with these teams to bring into the talent project? Well, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a student of the game. I'm a lifelong learner and I, I, I take notes everywhere I go and I want to know, you know, what works and what doesn't work and what can I adapt. But all along the way, I'm accumulating knowledge of what it's like. And, and one thing that I have absolutely learned is that when you're in a special place, in a special club, you feel it the minute you walk in. You know, I've worked with IX in the past and, and uh, with 1860 Munich, who have one of the best uh, academies in, in Germany. Uh, over the over the last 20 years and um uh, and but everywhere i go i'm taking notes and it's how the people conduct themselves how do the coaches conduct themselves even how the groundskeepers conduct themselves you know how do the people act when they're answering the telephones how do the people act that, that are washing the clothes everything is important and at a great club at a top level club everybody is working at the very highest level and everybody understands their role and the success of the organization and this is why it's so important when you have an organization. We, we want to duplicate that. You know, I've, I don't want mediocre performers. We just don't want them because that just brings mediocrity into the entire program. So we're always looking to, to build yeah. it better. So bringing that excellence into the town project, what are some of the main themes that you pass on to the players in terms of how they conduct themselves, how on and off the field really um, you know, how they approach trials, how they approach speaking to new teammates or coaches and just trying to pursue that excellence. What are some of those things that you pass on to the players? Well, I think it all starts with accountability that, uh, you know, we're dealing with people here, but, you know, they have to understand that, you know, there's a saying that a good player picks himself. And, you know, we, we tell the guys, look, if you really want to be in the starting lineup, it's up to you this week in training to write your name in the lineup. And, uh, and if you don't, and don't come to us because you're deciding your position in the team by your performance. But, and what does that mean? That means every single training session, every single opportunity you have to present yourself, you gotta be spot on. You gotta be fully, fully concentrated. You gotta be switched on all the time. And so they, they start to understand that there's no, the only easy day was yesterday. And uh, so you have to be, you have to be on point, but it's not just, it's not just that it's there's a lot of little things that we insist upon how they take care of their equipment making sure that they greet the coaches before they show up and or other people that are might be there on the sidelines to watch make sure you greet them and make sure you say thank you and say goodbye at the end of a training session these are just manners but it indicates a level of professionalism that you'll always see at top clubs always you always deal with it. young germans are particularly good at this but i've seen this also with the dutch and the french uh, that they are very fastidious about manners and how you conduct yourself in a professional way. And we have to make sure that we are always, always looking for professional habits, both on and off the field. So from your experience, can you just talk a little bit about the youth club set up in Germany, I guess, in terms of maybe foundation, key differences you see, and then some advice of how clubs back in the U.S. can kind of take things and apply specifically even right now? Well, we're getting better in the United States, and there's a lot of really smart people that are helping to move the game forward. And so I, I think that, you know, I, I don't think we're that far behind, you know, and, I, and I've had an argument with some of our coaches over here that I think by the time our U8s become U19s, we might just be passing you guys. 
because we've had so many good athletes and we're devo devoting a lot of financial resources to the game, which helps a lot. O over here though, they're brought up in a system that's clearly vertically integrated. And so you've got kids that enter into a club and there's a very clear pathway from each age group leading up to the first team. And that creates an entirely different mindset. And we don't have that yet. I know they're trying to, to, to create that, but even you know MLS, they started to, to go vertically downwards and then they abandoned that. And I think we've got that wrong. Mm. You know, they're, they're spending a lot of their efforts in under 19s or 18s and 17s and probably down to the 15s, but then they're forgetting about the younger age groups when this, that's the most important time is when they're developing this technical foundation and the romance for the game that are, is also critical to, to fuel their motivation later on. So I, I think that's probably one area where we're not really getting it right yet. So you're bringing young players over and giving them a, an incredible experience uh, very far away from home, most likely their first time away from home. Hmm. What are the advantages of that? Well, they're getting something that can't be replicated in the United States. For one, they're they have either they're going to have the strength to to thrive, and I mean they have to thrive, uh, even when they don't know they're thriving, but and, but they're learning, and but they're outside their comfort area, and they're having to reach, and this is really really critical for their development, and, uh, and so they they get the environmental reinforcement, they get the football culture, they get uh, to play these other you know we we, we what ha what do you think it's like for them when they play against FC Bayern and mm -hmm. they go. A seventy million dollar complex, or they go to Red Bull Salzburg, and I said, "Can it possibly get any better than that? No, it can't. It just can't." And so they're seeing, and not only that, but they're seeing these teams that they're playing against, and we're playing against some of these these um, uh, this Bundesliga academy teams where the players are technically perfect, they're athletic, they're tactically astute, so they can they can make tactical adjustments on the fly within the game without the coach having to direct them and pull the strings and stuff like that. And they run like jackrabbits. And so, you know, you're, they're, they're playing against these guys. And, you know, so every week they're seeing this. And in order for them to aspire to, to get to the, to be able to close the gap, they have to reach those levels. Mm -hmm. So they're reaching, they're reaching all the time. When in training, we're reaching. And as soon as we start to get a little bit comfortable, ah, they're almost there. Let's raise the bar again. Now they got to keep reaching and they, they're uncomfortable again. And they're reaching. Now they're starting to, no, now they're starting to get it. Whoop, let's raise the bar again. So they're always having to stretch themselves. And that's what develops players, but they don't get that in the United States because we're too competition oriented. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great point. I actually was going to segue into this as well is that maybe it's a human fault, but maybe it's even more of an American fault where we like to measure success in terms of especially numbers or in terms of you getting the contract. I would imagine as many as with as many success stories as you've had, there's more failure stories. And, uh, you know, we've heard you on other podcasts and Sean and I don't like the word failure as much because the opportunity you can grow from, you can learn from. So even when you don't get something, you learn so much from it. So how do you kind of bring that into your players mentality that it is not all about getting the contract, um, but it's about the learning experience and then taking that to grow as a player and as a person? Oh, that's a super question. Uh, it's, it, I think it's easier to convince the players than it is the parents. <laughs> really? Okay. Because a lot of times, you know, I've had, I've had a couple of parents say, well, if he doesn't get picked up by a club, this is a, you know, uh, we've wasted our time. I said, are you kidding me? look what your son is doing it's, it's just like I, I just want to slap him and uh um you know you say this is about growth this is about development if you grow and you develop and all that takes care of itself mm. you know the offers come this is what we tell try to tell our players if you're concerned about the results on saturday afternoon if you're concerned about that contract you might as well go home mm. Because this is not about that. If you do your job, if you're playing, you're picking yourself for the first 11 every week by your training, your training habits are good, you're learning, you're, you're resilient, you're bouncing back from your failures and setbacks, mistakes or setbacks, I agree, nuts don't use failure. But, but if you're bouncing back from that, then the doors open for you automatically. People, say, people search you out. You don't have to be searching for people. And I decided to do a a favor for a friend who had helped previously get in. And he said, I got a friend. He's really good. Would you help him out? Uh, a goalkeeper. That's all I need. You know, because every goalkeeper is everywhere. Right? And that's hard. But yeah. I said, okay, I'll, I'll get him. I said, get him over here. And I don't have anything specific, but if he's here, 
Mm -hmm. You can start training. And then when the phone rings or when someone, I get word that someone's short a goalkeeper, boom, he's ready to go and get him on a train. And he's right there. Well, he'd been there for about a week. And um, I got a call from someone from Schalke. And they said, uh, you know, we really need a goalkeeper for the under 23s. And you know, this is a big club and under 23s is playing in the third Bundesliga. And so there is a lot of money at stake with this, this club. So they need this player. And so I said to him, and I'm not going to mention his name, but I said, you know, get in there and try to speak a little bit of German. Do you know any, and I can say a few words, say, say a few words. And so he said, yeah, okay, okay, okay. So I watched the training and I thought, oh, he did pretty good. He's got a shot here. I watched the second set training session. I thought, I think this guy's got a real shot at it. So after the session, I know after the first session, I said, uh, how did it go? I, I, how'd you like us? I loved it. Wow, that's tremendous. I really had a great time. Uh, did you speak any German? And uh, I just made him speak English. I said, well, I said, do you think that's a wise idea? He says, oh, you know, they can all speak pretty good English. You know, I just made him speak English. I said, oh. I don't think it's a really good idea. So why don't you try try it different tomorrow? I said, I'll see what I can do. He didn't. <laughs> so after the session, the coach comes up to me and says, I really like your boy. He's 99% what we're looking for. I said, oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> 99 is not 100%. So, okay, tell me what that 1% is. He said, he didn't try to speak German. He didn't try to speak a word of German. So we're going to pass on him. We don't want to take a risk that he can't. Uh, communicate with the other players or the coach doesn't want to know he has to explain things twice. This, th this is simply, you know, I gave my best advice to the guy mm. going in, he could have had a contract with Schalke and he probably would have, even at that level, you know, 10, 15, 20,000 a month is pretty good money for a young guy. And yet all he had to do was speak a little German. Unreal. <laughs> We'll be